Hello everyone, and welcome to BikeRide.com Reviews. We're here to bring you reviews on some of the best e-bikes and bikes in the industry today. Today we're going to be looking at an offering from the brand Flyer, which is the Flyer M880 Midtail Electric Fat Tire Cargo Bike. So what is the Flyer M880? Well the Flyer M880 is as classified by Flyer a mid-tail fat tire electric cargo bike. Flyer has stuck to its roots with solid craftsmanship and attention to detail. This affordable cargo and commuter e-bike brings a lot of value for its price range. This has resulted in a very well balanced first offering from Flyer. While this bike may leave some commuters seeking higher speeds and more torque, it's a great option for parents and families looking to get their first e-bike. It's hard to find much not to like about the M880, but after putting a whole bunch of miles on, we've come up with a list of pros and cons about this bike. Let's start with the pros. Coming in at number one, we've got a quality build. This bike feels robust and you're gonna really get a good quality for the price point here. Number two on the pros is along the same lines, there is good component choices here for the price range. It's nice that they went with the Shimano gears and shifting and the Tektro brakes are an excellent choice for stopping. So again, you're getting good value for the price point. Another pro has to do with the target audience. This bike feels like it's excellent for cargo hauling and it feels very safe. I would have no problem putting my kit on the back and it's really gonna be well-rounded for beginners and those that are looking to maximize the efficiency of cargo hauling and kid hauling without feeling unsafe and feeling in control the whole time. The battery life is excellent, allowing you to cover long journeys without having any range anxiety. And finally coming up on the pros, it's got a smooth and intuitive feel for beginners. It's a very easy bike to ride and it feels very comfortable cruising around the streets at home. So it's going to be really easy to pick this up as your first bike and enjoy riding it. And next, because nothing can be all good, let's take a look at some of those things that our testers didn't like so much about the bike or that didn't seem to work. Testers found that the 500 watt motor on the back seemed to struggle with steeper hills. Now, we did test it on some extremely steep hills and it did manage to make its way up the majority of those hills except for the absolute steepest ones without issue. These are the kind of extreme things that you would be doing on a commute and definitely not your normal hill riding. But we did note that repetitive hills and very large steep hills seem to put a lot of strain on the motor. Now, if you have any mild or moderate hills, it's gonna handle those just fine. And that battery life is excellent. The second con that our testers found was that, again, when it came to the motor, now this is a pro when it comes to safety, but a con when it can come to power, that 50 Newton meter motor has a very smooth ramp, which is excellent when you have cargo or kids on the back. But when you're looking for some speed, if you're looking to make a pass out of a bike lane, or if you need to get started quickly to cross a road, you might be left wanting for some of this torque. It's gonna to be a benefit for beginners, people who are looking at the safety aspect. They're never gonna get bucked off the bike by that quick use of the throttle. But after you've become more comfortable with the bike and you might be looking for more performance or you might be in a situation where you need to get that speed a little bit quicker, you are gonna find that there's the same ramp up on all pedal assist and the throttle. So it's always gonna take a second for that to kick in. And you're also gonna find that as you're coming down from speed. So if you're coming off of a hill, you've reached about 24 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, you're settling back down to the max speed, which is 20 miles per hour for this class two e-bike. You're gonna find that that motor is gonna wait until you hit about 18 miles an hour to really kick back in and for you to feel that motion. So until you get used to that, you can wind up putting in a little bit of pedal power before that motor kicks back in coming off of a hill. Another con we found, and this can be common at bikes with this price range, is that the bike is not rated for riding in wet weather conditions. Now, we haven't tested it to see exactly how wet this can get, but there is no waterproof rating, so they don't recommend you to be riding in rainy conditions. This is definitely something that you should think about if you live in a place where you get a lot of rain and you're looking to commute or carry out those cargo carrying functions while it's raining outside. And finally, the last con has to do with the attached headlight. Now, it's advertised as a high intensity LED headlight, and while it is very nicely integrated with the bike, there's some excellent functionality. It's very clean. They've done a good job and I'm glad that it's integrated into the bike in here. I wouldn't say that it's bright enough for true night riding. I would probably want to supplement that with a headlight on my head or maybe another one on the front of the bike. 
It's good for visibility. It's going to allow other drivers to see you, but I don't feel like it's enough if you're traveling up to 20 miles an hour at night. These are some specific points that we think that consumers should know about the bike so that they're aware of what they're purchasing, but not something that we think is a specific con against the bike. Something that consumers should note is that cargo bikes are heavy. This bike weighs 70 pounds by itself. And when you add on the fact that you can fit 50 pounds of cargo on the rear rack and 25 pounds in the front pack, you're looking at a very heavy bike. If you are a smaller individual, you may not be comfortable lifting that weight all the time. And that brings us to our second point. This bike features a very heavy duty, moped style, double-sided kickstand. This is a great feature when it comes to loading the bike and it's very durable and very stable when you're putting stuff onto the bike. But when it comes into play is when we're utilizing this with the 70 pound bike, you have to lift the rear of that bike 70 pounds in order to kick the kickstand on. This can be kind of hard for, again, smaller individuals. And if you have that 50 pounds of weight in the back, you're lifting a lot of weight to get that kickstand on and off. I can see some people really loving the stability of the kickstand, and I can see other individuals wishing that they had a more traditional one-sided kickstand. Another thing to be aware of is this is a class two e-bike. That means that it is speed limited to 20 miles per hour. As a commuter in a city, you might find a class three e-bike better suits your needs if you're looking for something that can easily take off and keep up with traffic and can travel at a higher rate of speed of 28 miles per hour. So if you're looking at something to do specifically commuting and you're not needing those cargo hauling functions, you may benefit from looking at something that's capable of traveling above 20 miles per hour. And finally, the last item that you should note, this e-bike has a very solid and robust frame and it features no suspension. So these are benefits when it comes to cargo hauling. We experience very little frame flux even with the step through on this model, but that does mean that it is going to transfer those bumps and those impacts from the road straight through to you. What we're seeing here is a focus on safety and functional design. This is a cargo and kid hauling machine and it's gonna be well situated for city riding and people who wanna do light duty commuting, cargo hauling and dropping kids off at school. You're gonna to wanna to ride it primarily on paved surfaces and it's not gonna do well with bumps and heavy hits. It has a lot of cargo carrying capacity with a 50 pound rear rack and 25 pound front rack capacity. It has great accessories that comes with it, including a child's car seat that you can add, the front and rear rack which can be added and some other accessories such as cup holders and phone mounts. So who should buy this bike? People who should look into purchasing this bike are beginner e-bike riders who are looking for a friendly bike to use in the city for cargo, kid hauling, and pleasure use. So who should not look into purchasing this bike? Those who are looking for a commuter specific item that want to travel at high speed and don't need cargo hauling capacity and also individuals that are looking for a higher torque motor, so don't have need for those safety features that would benefit individuals hauling cargo and kids safely. When first taking a look at the bike, you can tell immediately that the frame is well built and feels robust. Clean welds and lines give the bike a nice utilitarian aesthetic. The integrated rack is very sturdy and blends well into the frame. The integrated battery also keeps a clean and simple look and is very easy to operate. There is no frame flex despite the step through style and mounting and dismounting is simple even with cargo on the rear. The frame is available in three sizes and features an adjustable handlebar angle and height and seat height to match riders preferences. Powering the bike is a 500 watt 50 newton meter unbranded motor which speeds you up to 20 miles per hour with ease over level ground and offers a welcome boost on mild and moderate hills. The motor is capable of tackling steeper inclines with the help of your legs, but beware of tackling multiple hills in a row during a long commute. The bike loses speed quickly on hills and can become overwhelmed. It's programmed to favor range over torque, so don't expect to be racing up hill after hill repetitively. The bike performs flawlessly on moderate terrain with an impressive range. It will handle all but the longest commutes with ease on a single charge, and I would struggle to see a rider left wanting with its capacity. The cockpit is clean and well configured. With well-organized wiring, an integrated front and rear lights controlled from the display. When adding a basket, Radio Flyer supplies additional components to move and mount the light to the basket. The operation is intuitive and the controller is large enough to see while riding. It offers function without a ton of extras. When powered on, the display shows odometer, speed, and 5-bar battery level on a single screen. 
Toggling the three push buttons on the bottom allows you to view the lifetime odometer, trip or battery level in bolts, adjust the five pedal assist levels, turn on and off the lights, and activate the walk mode. The half turn throttle is fun and easy to use and offers a good way to get the heavy bike started without pedaling. The Shimano shifter is also intuitive and offers visual indicators for gear shifting from both the shifting window and the position of the shifter. Braking is comfortable and you're able to get several fingers on the lever to assist with the mechanical brakes. The motor is powered by a 48 volt, 15 amp hour or 687 watt hour UL tested lithium ion battery that's filled with Samsung 50E2170 cells. This battery offers impressive range, even in the max assist level, and I found ranges of 30 miles were easily attainable, as the company says. To ensure you always make it home, even when going long distances, the computer is programmed to preserve battery life as it drains, and you'll notice the top speed limits as you get lower in the battery level. The bike comes with a nicely branded 2 amp charger and cable. The plug-in is located conveniently on the top of the battery, close to the cockpit. This is nice because it keeps the plug away from the cranks and possible damage and makes it really easy to access. The battery is easily removed and the key port is located on the upper side of the tube. The battery unlocks and locks with a satisfying click and it's easy to remove and install. The battery charges from zero to 100% in six to 10 hours due to that large capacity. Shifting is complements of a Shimano SL TX50 7R shifter with a TY300 rear derailleur and a seven speed cassette. Up front, you have a 44 tooth with 170 millimeter forged ally crank set with a dual sided aluminum guard. Shifting is clean and the gearing matches the motor capability with a top speed of 20 miles per hour. At higher speeds, you lose the ability to pedal and you're just along for the ride, but that's pretty typical when you're seeing something like a seven speed cassette. And with the bike limited to 20 miles per hour, it's not affecting you at any point when you're actually pedaling. The lowest gear tackles larger hills with minimal effort. Braking is taken care of with a set of Tektro Ares MD M300 mechanical calipers and 180 millimeter rotors give it a nice assist. The aluminum levers are comfortable to use, but they don't feature a reach adjustment. The included motor shut up on the brakes is a great safety feature and it worked reliably. The brakes have good stopping power and feel reliable, though they do get noisy under certain braking conditions, which can be disconcerting or annoying. I found that the stopping power was consistent and good. The tires are large and offer a comfortable ride on the road. Cornering is decent and the ride is comfortable at speed. The CST Big Boat tires are three inches and offer good cushioning. And the included puncture protection is a nice touch to keep you riding problem free. The wheels are 36 spoke steel rims and appear very robust. The 26 inch tires travel well and suit the bike with a quick release front axle and bolt on rear axle. The fenders are hard plastic with metal hangers and were easy enough to install after some finagling on setup. The fenders fit snugly and perform well under most conditions. The bike feels very friendly to ride. It's got a smooth ramp up in power at all assist levels. It's a nice feature when cargo or kids are in tow on the rear rack. The brakes feature a motor cutoff, ensuring you can stop quickly from full power. The rear light always illuminates when braking, and both the front and rear can be illuminated for nighttime driver awareness. The bike also features reflectors on the pedals and wheels. The Flyer logo located on the front and rear basket is also made from reflective fabric, which is a nice little touch. You can also alert other trail users with an integrated bell on the left brake lever. Let's take a look at some of the personal items like the grips, pedals, and seat. The included Welgo flat pedals are comfortable to ride with and offer good traction on the foot. The seat at first glance appears comfortable. After a long ride, I found it was less comfortable than I first thought. When it came to the grips, it went the opposite way. I'm not normally a fan of grips in this shaped ergonomic style, but I found them comfortable to rest your hands on and easy to hold in this case. They produced no discomfort and it was easy to use the throttle and brake while operating the bike. I was pleasantly surprised by them. Flyer continued the good design choices throughout these items and I found the bike was ready to use right out of the box and would require no changes for most users. And that's it guys. That's the Flyer M880 Midtail Fat Tire Electric Cargo Bike. In our opinion, this bike performs very closely to how it was advertised and would benefit the target audience well. So long as you're not purchasing this bike intending to get extreme performance, high speeds, or a lot of torque, and you don't live in a hilly area or plan to ride it in extremely rainy conditions, you're gonna get a lot of good use and pleasure out of this bike.
when it comes to a class two e-bike focused on city and suburban cargo and kid hauling, this bike feels like a safe, durable, and well-designed choice for an affordable price point. Is this bike for you? You can check out more detailed specs on the bike at bikeride.com and see expert and user reviews. So be sure to check out bikeride.com for more great reviews and bike related content. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe so we can bring you more great e-bike related content. For now, I hope you enjoy the ride.